my friends, I'm back and I am going to test out to see if we can make a rainbow in a jar. Now, what you'll need for today's experiment is four popsicle sticks, a tablespoon measuring spoon, a straw, four colors of food co coloring. I would use your red, yellow, green, and blue if you have it to help make the rainbow colors. This is my sugar. You'll need two cups of warm tap water. Tap water is the water that comes right out of your sink. The directions also say that we are going to want one tall thin glass. This is the best I have in my house, so we're going to try it out. And you're going to want four small jars. Well, unfortunately, I don't have four small jars, so I found four small clear glasses so we can see what's going on as we go. So to start off, we are going to want to measure a half cup of the warm tap water into each of our four glasses. There's a half. And a half. And a half. And let's do our last glass. And a half. Yay, I didn't spill any, which I'm really good at doing. Now we're going to use our food coloring next. And we're going to add two drops of food coloring to each glass. Be really careful because this comes out fast. That one looks more than the other. Make sure you measure better than I did. Obviously, that is not one of my strong points. Okay, we've got some color. So our next step is we're going to add sugar to each of our cups. But because of how we're doing our experiment, it's going to be a different amount of sugar in each cup. You also don't want to get your spoon wet like I just did, because otherwise it will all of your sugar. So let me grab a different one. Okay, in your red cup, you want to add two tablespoons of sugar. So we're gonna go one, Two. I'm going to put it down. In your yellow cup, you want to add four tablespoons of sugar. Okay. In your green cup, you want to add six tablespoons of sugar. And last, in your blue cup, you want to add eight tablespoons of sugar. Okay, now 
you're going to see that each of the jars got a little bit bigger. They have an increasing what we're called density. So as we put the sugar inside, it's making it a little bit more dense. We're also going to use our popsicle sticks to stir the sugar in a second. not dissolving, put your glass in the microwave for 30 seconds. So you'll want to make sure that the clear glasses you use are microwavable. Okay, that one looks dissolved. That one looks good. Your green and your blue are going to be your part to get to dissolve. So you might need to stir it a little longer. And those might be the ones you need to microwave. So because we have a different amount of sugar in each one of our four glasses, they each have a different amount of density. And usually when we talk about density, things that weigh the heaviest or are the most dense float to the bottom. So we are going to try to a rainbow. We're gonna start off by pouring about an inch of blue into the bottom of our glass. Now, you don't want to pour because otherwise it's going to like plop down and disturb the blue layer. So what you actually wanna do is use your straw, put your finger at the top and slowly dribble the green down the side. Let's see if this makes a new layer. I can see it. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera. Okay, so I have about a quarter inch green layer on top of my blue because it is less dense than the blue. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the yellow. I don't know how well this is gonna show on the camera. So this might be something where you just walk through with the experiment and do in person. Oh wow, the yellow is really showing up. Okay, in my case, I don't know, can you see it? It looks like the yellow mixed with the green at the top. Let's see if red looks any different. Okay, the red is working. It's not red necessarily like you see it to be the dark. And then I have a green, and then I have a blue. I don't know what happened to my yellow blue. But when you redo this at home, try it out. Maybe I 
Maybe it wasn't mixed well, maybe it was the wrong amount. I don't know, but let's see how you did. And that's our rainbow in a jar as we go. And it's a lesson in density. Hey everybody, we are going to do some fizzy rainbow science. In today's experiment for this, as part of our rainbow science program, you will need some vinegar. You don't need a lot. I pour it out a little bit into a Ziploc container. You will need some food coloring. The red, blue, yellow, green works great. You will need some baking soda. You will need something to scoop out the baking soda. And you will need something to put the piles of baking soda on that is easily cleaned up. The original experiment recommended little two ounce cups. I don't have a lot of those around my house. So I'm going to use a plate with sides on it. Another thing you can use is a, um, what's it called? A cookie sheet, one of the ones with sides around like a jelly roll pan, or if you have something disposable, it's, this is super fun to play with and your kids will love it, but you'll want an easy way to clean it up. So we are gonna start off and I am going to make four piles of baking soda. I am also going to spread them out. So I'm going to kind of do one in each corner. The reason is, is because you'll see on this experiment is as it begins to fizz, it's really gonna start to spread. And I wanna be able to have a little bit of a rainbow effect as we do. So for these, I just put a half tablespoon. You just want a small pile to make it fun. You're going to add a couple of drops of food coloring to each pile. I'm gonna do four. Be careful if you are not used to food coloring or if you're giving it to your child because food coloring does come out pretty fast. Okay, so I have my piles ready to go. Now you need an easy way to put vinegar onto your piles. If you pour it, it's going to go too fast and it's going to spread. If you have an eyedropper, they work really well. Or I'm going to use a straw. And when you put the straw in the vinegar, you put your finger over the end and it will pick some up inside. And I'm going to drop a little bit of vinegar on each pile to start before I come around and do another. See it go? I can hear it. That's a good question to ask your kids as you start to do this with them. What do they see? What do they hear? What's it look like? This isn't one I would taste, but you could touch it. There's nothing wrong with touching this one. That one came out, that didn't work. Can you see it on the camera? I hear a fizzing sound. So the science behind this is when vinegar and baking soda are mixed together, the hydrogen ions in the vinegar react with the sodium and bicarbonate ions in the baking soda. The reaction is what you see in the bubbles and foam. While we're doing this as a rainbow right now, this is also a fun one to do in the summer if you make a volcano and you have it explode outside with some red lava, vinegar and baking soda make great red lava. But once again, that's one you wanna do outside because you want the ability to clean it up with a hose. And then just to show you the difference, let me pour a little. Yeah, if you pour a little as I just did, 
you'll see it starts to spread too fast and bubble. See if I can bring the camera in closer so you can see these ones. Can you see? And that's how we do our fizzy science. And the best part is now that we're done, I can just throw this away. Hi, everybody. I have one more segment of rainbow science, and we are going to do some paper towel art. For today's project, you are going to need some permanent markers to draw your design. I like to use Sharpies, and I have a couple in different colors. I am also going to need some markers that are specifically listed as washable. Crayola does a great job with washable markers. I will need some water. I recommend if you have a spray bottle, grab that because it'll do it and have a lot more control, but you will need some water. You'll need a paper towel. If you don't have the select a size paper towels and yours come off in the is it eight by eight sheet, you'll wanna cut it in half. So it starts like this and then you'll fold it in half. And then you want some sort of way to cover your table, um, do it in a safe place because permanent markers do sometimes leak and we are going to be drawing on a paper towel. An easy thing to draw on is a paper plate because I can just throw that away afterwards. So we're gonna start with my paper towel and it's folded in half. So it looks like a square. I'm going to use my permanent markers first and I am going to draw my picture. Now the picture that you want for this part of the project is you're going to want something that's more aligned. You just want to draw. This isn't a color time because that's going to be the second part of the experiment. Because we are doing rainbow science today, I am just drawing the outline of a rainbow. Do you know the colors? For my rainbow that I drew, I'm going to start with red. I have orange, I have yellow, and I have green. Now the reason we work on a paper plate is you can see how it went through. So the second part of your experiment is you are going to take your washable markers, and this is when you get to color. So I am going to color in my rainbow. and my design. You don't have to be perfect at coloring because when we do the next part and you see how the color spreads, it will cover up any mistakes or parts that you didn't color. Also, if you have never seen me color, I am not a great color. I don't have the patience, so I end up with a lot of scribbles. Like that. Okay, so I did some red. Let's do some orange. Next, I'm going to do some yellow. And finally, some green. What do you think? Should my rainbow sit in a blue sky? I think so too. So let's pull out some blue and I'm gonna color around my rainbow so I fill up my whole square. That'll make this look cool too. Oops, looks like the blue's out of ink. 
What do you think? Should I have a purple sky? Let's try that. Plus, purple is my favorite color. So here's my creation. I've got my rainbow. I have my rainbow outline. I've got my purple sky. And I don't know if you can see all the color on my paper plate. This is why I say to put a tablecloth down underneath. Now your next step is you're gonna fold your outline over your design. And I recommend putting it on a paper plate or doing it outside. Um, you want somewhere where the color can spread and it's not going to hurt your counters or so, something nice like your carpet. If you have a spray bottle, those work perfect because that way the kids have the control and they can do it themselves and they can spray it and it's not a whole bunch of water at one time. Today we are going to do the dump method because all of my spray bottles are broken. We're going to add just a little bit of water at one time. And the reason we're adding a little bit of water is because water spreads, especially for something like this. I don't know if you can see it as we go. And I would probably pick it up pretty quick. So I think that was cool. All of my color spread through. If you did this with um, a spray bottle, you would have a lot less water dripping down right now, but I would put it somewhere nice to dry, whether on a newspaper or out of the way, and you've got a great creation. This also works really good if you're making flowers, or the other thing you can use instead of paper towels are um, coffee filters. If you still have some of those, they make great butterfly wings or hearts, but they're also like a watercolor paper, so the water will spread as you put your watercolor colors on. Thanks for joining me.